Welcome to Wheels Up with Sunrise on Wheels. I'm Michelle Newman. Today's program is all about marine animals. And like all Wheels Up episodes, it has three segments. First, I'll take you on a trip to Cape Town, South Africa, where we'll explore the big five marine animals. Baleen whales, dolphins, sharks, seals, and African penguins. Next, we'll craft with Caroline, making our very own walrus craft, whale puppet scene, and an octopus. Finally, I hope you'll play along with Sierra as she hosts Marine Animal Trivia. Most of the time when we think of African animals, we think of the lion, leopard, rhino, elephant, and buffalo. But Africa's oceans are filled with magnificent sea life. Today I want to take you on a trip to Cape Town, South Africa, where we will explore the marine big five, the baleen whale, dolphin, shark, seal, and penguin. Whales are the largest animals that have ever lived on Earth and are the largest animals that live in the ocean. They're even bigger than the largest dinosaur, and it's believed that millions of years ago, whales probably walked upon land. Their back legs disappeared over time and their front legs became flippers. There are two types of cetaceans, toothed whales and baleen whales. The key differences between them is the way they feed and what they have inside their mouth. Baleen whales have plates in their mouths instead of teeth, which allow them to filter food. Their baleen, also known as the whale bone, is not made of bone at all. It's made of keratin, similar to our fingernails, and grows downwards from the upper jaw of most large whales. When baleen whales open their mouth, water and prey, such as krill or small fish upon which they feed, pour in. The water floods back out the baleen filters out the prey and traps it in the whale's mouth, ready to be swallowed. Toothed whales have teeth, and they actively hunt fish, squid, and other sea creatures. Dolphins and porpoises are toothed whales. All whales are mammals, not fish, which means they're warm-blooded, breathe through lungs, not gills, give birth to live young, produce milk for their young, and have body hair. While it may not look like it, they do when they're born. When it comes to breathing, whales and humans alike are limited by their lung capacities. However, whales' lungs can hold much more oxygen than land walkers, meaning they can stay underwater for much longer before they have to come up for air. Whales also use blowholes to breathe, some even have two. The plankton-eating baleen whales have two blue holes, whereas whales with teeth have just one, like dolphins. Baleen whales migrate thousands of miles each year. They eat during the summer month, bundling up layers of blubber. And they can eat a lot. A blue whale can consume close to 8,000 pounds of food a day. And what goes in must come out. Whales' poop fertilizes the surface of the ocean nutrients crucial to the health of the world. Whales bring nutrients from the bottom of the ocean to its surface, where it helps phytoplankton grow, which is important for the health of our oceans. Moan, groan, click, and sigh to talk to each other. Baleen whales such as humpbacks and blue whales communicate through a series of songs. Next up are dolphins. Luckily, with the rich marine biodiversity along South Africa's coastline, these awesome aquatic mammals can be seen in both the Indian and Atlantic Oceans, jumping in and out of the surf. No other marine mammal inspires as much excitement and joy as they cavort through the water. The sardine run, which takes place between May and July, is a great time to see dolphins as they gather in mass to take advantage of the abundance of food. While all dolphins are smaller types of whales with teeth, what makes them special? Dolphins are considered to be amongst the most intelligent of animals and are friendly and extremely playful. Some dolphins, such as dusky striped and spinner dolphins, are particularly well known for their fast swimming, frequent jumping, and boisterous behavior. They have one blowhole on the top of their head, which is how they breathe. Dolphins live in social groups of five to several hundred, called pods. They use echolocation, a method of using sound waves to see in the dark. It's a little like the game Marco Polo, where a blindfolded person must try to find people by listening to the sound of their voice. Dolphins are very good at hearing and often hunt together. 
From scary movies to beachside warnings, sharks have a frightening reputation. But are they really as dangerous as they are portrayed? The truth is only about a hundred people each year are attacked by sharks. In fact, more people are killed by bee stings than by shark attacks. The shark is the largest fish in the sea and has been on Earth for more than 300 million years. They are around even before the dinosaurs. Sharks, unlike most fish, don't have bones, but have cartilage, which is a soft substance like the material that shapes your ear. A shark has two dorsal fins on its back, one beneath its body, which is called the pectoral fin, and the tail, which is the caudal fin. Not all sharks have the same teeth. Many have several rows of teeth, and when one tooth falls out, another one moves forward to replace it. Each shark leaves a unique, telltale mark on their prey. A shark's skin is covered by small, razor-sharp teeth called denticles, so it feels a little like sandpaper. These scales point towards the tail and help reduce friction from surrounding water when the shark swims. It's hard to see in the murky waters of the deep, but sharks have excellent vision. A shark also has a remarkable sensitivity to vibrations in the water. Using special electroreceptor organs near the nose, eyes, and mouth, the shark can sense electromagnetic fields and temperature shifts in the ocean, which means sharks can feel the movements made by other animals hundreds of feet away. They can hear sounds from thousands of feet away and can tell the direction from where the sound is coming from. In addition to a great sense of sight and hearing, a shark can smell even a single drop of blood in the water, 10,000 times better than a human's. Now just because a shark picks up a sense of blood in the water, it doesn't mean it'll go on the hunt. A shark only eats when he's hungry. One good meal is enough to satisfy a shark's hunger and the meal can last a shark for a very long period because it uses very little energy to swim. Sharks are picky eaters. They often take one bite of something before they decide to go in for the kill. In the unusual event of a shark attack, mostly it involves a simple bite in which the shark swims away. Not terribly comforting, but experts say the main thing to avoid is looking like a shark's favorite food, seals. South Africa is one of the best places in the world to see or even dive with the great white sharks. Found in cool coastal waters around the world, great whites are the largest predatory fish on earth. Great whites are torpedo shaped with powerful tails that can propel them through the water at up to 15 miles per hour. And their mouth is very scary. They have 300 sharp triangular teeth arranged in up to seven rows. Yikes! Next, let's explore pinnipeds. There is something comical about these funny-looking sea giants sunning themselves and flumping about on their clown shoe flippers. But as they plop off dry land and into the water, you get a great sense of the playfulness, agility, and speed of these aquatic mammals. Seals, sea lions, and walruses belong to a group of marine mammals called pinnipeds, referring to their flippered feet. Seals, true seals or earless seals, have no external ear flap. Walruses are the largest pinnipeds. Sea lions have external ears and hind limbs that can be rotated forward to allow them to walk and climb on land. Though especially abundant in polar seas, seals are found throughout the world with some species favoring the open ocean and others inhabiting coastal waters or spending time on islands, shores, or ice flows. Thick layers of fat, also known as blubber, keeps the animal warm in addition to dense fur. Walruses are the exception to this rule, as these large tusked pinnipeds have nearly hairless bodies. While there are many differences among the species, all seals have feet. Seals are mammals and that means they have fur, are born live, drink milk when they're babies. It also means they're warm-blooded. Male seals are called bulls and females are called cows. A seal cow will give birth once a year to a calf. Seals are semi-aquatic mammals, meaning they spend most of their lives in the water, but they will come on to land on occasion. On land, they're extremely cumbersome and must move their often enormous bodies by wriggling almost like a worm. In the ocean, though, seals swim with exceeding grace and swiftness, using all four flippers for both propulsion and steering. Some species can dive a thousand feet deep and remain submerged for over an hour. Their favorite food is fish or squid, and their biggest enemy are sharks, orcas, and polar bears. The South African fur seal is often termed the puppies of the sea, filled with antics and fun. They're the largest of all the fur seals and are particularly special 
because they're found along the shores of South Africa and Namunga. They have a velvety dark gray or brown fur. Our fifth and final marine animal is the penguin. Not all penguins live where it's cold. African penguins live at the southern tip of Africa. Like other penguins, African penguins spend much of their day feeding in the ocean, and that keeps them cool. Their land habitat can get quite warm, but bare skin on their legs and around their eyes help them stay cool. They also stay in the shade when they can. Most other penguins lay their eggs out in the open, but African penguins have a different approach. They dig burrows to lay their eggs so they're protected from the sun's heat. The young chicks stay in the burrows for about three weeks. After that, they go out to explore, return to the burrow to stay cool and avoid predators. On land, leopards, mongooses, and domestic dogs and cats hunt penguins. In the water, penguins must avoid sharks, fur, seals, and orcas. African penguins eat small fish like anchovies and sardines, along with squid and some shellfish. The African penguin is an endangered species. There are only about 52,000 birds left in the wild. What's threatening them? One problem is that humans gather penguin poop, called guano, for fertilizer. But to gather large amounts, heavy equipment is brought in and destroying their nesting sites. African penguins have a loud call that sounds like a donkey brain. Funny, right? Not far from Cape Town is the amazing Boulders Beach, where penguins come so close to the erect walkways that you could potentially reach out and grab one. Of course, you wouldn't do that. Wild endangered animals should be left alone. So our trip to South Africa must come to an end. Were you surprised by the rich marine life? Do you have a favorite marine animal? I look forward to seeing you next time. I hope you enjoyed our adventure. Let's go craft with Caroline. to do arts and crafts with you today. Today's video was all about marine animals, so today we're going to do three really fun marine animal themed crafts. We're going to make a walrus craft, an octopus craft, and a really fun whale puppet craft. I hope you have fun! So first we are going to make a walrus craft, and what you will need is some dark brown paper, some lighter brown paper, some black paper, and if you don't have any of these colors, you can use white paper and color it. Some glue, scissors, googly eyes, and if you don't have googly eyes, you can color your eyes, and some yarn. I'm using rainbow yarn because that's all I have right now, but you can use brown or any color you want. So first, I'm going to cut a circle out of my dark brown paper, and I'm going to cut it so that it takes up as much room as possible because I want it to be pretty big. Like this. And this is going to be the head of our walrus. And next I'm going to make two little circles out of my light brown paper. So I'm going to fold it in half so that they're the same size and I'm going to cut on the open side. Make sure you don't cut on the folded side. So I'm going to cut a circle about this size. And next, I'm going to cut my black paper, and this is going to be the nose. So I'm going to cut a little oval shape out of my paper, like this. So now I'm going to start to glue together my walrus. So first I'm going to take one of my brown circles and I'm going to put some glue on it and I'm going to stick it right here. And next I'm going to place my other brown circle right here, a little bit next to it. And then I'm going to put my nose in the middle so that it's on both, both brown circles. And then I'm going to put some glue on my googly eyes and they are going to go 
right here above the nose and the other part of the face. And it's already looking so cute. Next, I'm going to make the walrus's tusks. So I'm going to take my popsicle stick and you can ask a grown up to help you. And I broke mine in half so that it's a little bit smaller. And I'm going to lift up this part of the face and put some glue. And my tusks are going to go underneath. Put a little bit more glue so that it stays. And it's okay if they come, if they go a little bit under the face because they're supposed to be long. Just like that. Might need a little bit more glue there. And next I'm going to make the walrus's whiskers and we need six. So I'm going to cut my string into six pieces and I want mine to be about that long, but you can make them as long as you want. And mine are rainbow because I only had rainbow string, but you can also use brown string or any color you want. Mine's gonna be a funny walrus because it has rainbow whiskers. Now I'm going to glue on my whiskers. And I'm, so I'm going to put three on each side. So I'm gonna put some glue and then stick it on. Mm -hmm. So now I finished gluing on my whiskers and my walrus is all done. If you want, you can give your walrus a name and you can decorate it even more. You can add a hat or a bow or anything you want to your walrus. So now we're going to make a really fun octopus craft. And I know that octopus wasn't in the video, but it's, in a, it's a marine animal and I think they're really cool. So what you need is a paper cup orange paper and if you don't have orange paper you can use white paper and color it markers or crayons or something to draw with glue scissors and you can use googly eyes or i have these sticker eyes or you can draw eyes on with markers so the first step is we're going to wrap our paper around our cup so i'm going to measure it first so i'm putting my paper down and i'm going to measure the height of my cup and now I'm going to cut across my paper so that it has the height, the right height of the cup. And now I'm going to cut my paper into two pieces so that it's a little bit easier to put around the cup. And now I'm going to put glue all over my cup so that it's easy to stick the paper on. And now I'm going to take one piece that I just cut and I'm going to place it on my cup. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to cut the cup. So if there's a little bit, you could still see your cup underneath, that's okay. And if it goes a little bit higher on the top, that's okay too. And now I put some more glue on my cup and I'm putting some on my paper too because they're going to overlap. And now I'm doing the same thing with my other piece of paper. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And the reason I covered my, my cup with paper was because I have a design on my cup so I couldn't really color it. But if you have a plain white cup, you can also paint it or color it to make it orange for an octopus. So now I'm going to cut my cup so that I get eight tentacles. So I'm going to cut up to about a little bit higher than the middle, like that. And now I'm going to cut so that I get eight little tentacles. like this. And now I'm going to roll each of the tentacles like this so that it becomes a little bit curled like that. And now I'm going to do it to each of my tentacles. And now I'm going to decorate my octopus with my eyes. 
So I'm sticking my eyes on the front like this. And I'm also gonna add some decorations with my marker. I'm gonna use a pink marker and on the tentacles, I'm gonna draw some little designs to make it a little bit more fun. And I'm just drawing random squiggly lines. And you can add any decorations that you want. You could do it with different colors. I'm just using pink, but you can, you can draw whatever you want. You can even add, you can add like a hat or a bow for your octopus, whatever you want. You can make more decorations out of paper. So this is what my finished octopus looks like. Now we are going to make a whale puppet craft. So what you will need is a paper plate, a popsicle stick, scissors, glue, some paper to decorate your plate. So I'm using light blue and dark blue for the sky and the water. And then I'm also using light blue for my whale, but you can also color your plate and use paper for your whale instead. And I'm using yellow paper for my son, but you can also color your son with yellow marker or crayon. And then you also need some markers to de for the smile and the eye for the whale. So first I'm going to measure my paper that I'm gonna glue onto my plate for the background. So first I'm gonna make the sky, so I'm using my light blue paper, and I'm going to measure I'm going to measure my plate and you can make the sky as big as you want, but it's going, I'm only making mine up to about here. So I'm measuring that. And then I'm going to connect the two pieces. So now it looks like this and I'm going to cut here and then straight across. So now I have my piece of paper that I cut out and now I'm going to glue it onto my paper plate. like this. And now I'm going to make the other part, which is the ocean. So now I'm going to measure this and you want it to overlap so that it makes a straight line. So I'm gonna make it a little bit above where the light blue is. Now I'm going to cut this out. And now I have this piece and I'm going to glue it onto my paper plate. So I'm going to overlap it a little bit with the lighter blue. And now I'm going to cut the slit so that the puppet can go through. So you're gonna make sure that you're holding your paper like this, and I'm going to fold it a little bit. Don't fold it and press it, but just fold it a little bit and cut. Make sure you're cutting in the dark blue area and I'm going to cut just a little bit like this. So then when you open it up, you have a little slit so that the puppet can go in. And now for the last part of the background, I'm going to cut out a sun. So I'm just gonna cut a circle like this. And now I'm going to glue it into the sky part of my background to so the light blue area. And if you want, you can add rays to your sun or whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it like this. And my sun is really big because it's a sunny day. And now I'm going to draw my whale that's gonna go on top of the popsicle stick and become the puppet. So first I'm going to draw the whale's head, which is going to be like this. And then it's gonna go straight and then back up for the tail and then down and up again. And now I'm going to cut this out. And now I'm going to draw with my black marker, my whale's eye and mouth. So I'm just gonna draw a circle for the eye and then for the mouth, I'm going to make it look like it's smiling. So I'm going to make it like that. And now I'm going to make the water that sometimes comes out of the whale's blowhole. So I'm going to cut a rectangle out of my paper like this and now I'm gonna put glue and then I'm gonna roll it into a little piece like this 
And now, to make it look like water, I'm going to cut some fringe. Just like that. And now I can fold them a little bit and make it so that it looks like water coming out of our whale's blowhole like this. So now I'm going to glue this on top of the whale's head. So I'm gonna put it in the middle, put some glue. And you can kind of mess up the fringe so that it looks like real water coming out like this. And now I'm going to glue my whale onto the popsicle stick. So I'm gonna put some glue on the popsicle stick and then glue my whale on. Just like that. And now it's going to go inside the slit and then you can control it from back here and you can do a little puppet show. I hope you had fun making these marine animal themed crafts with me. Bye. Thanks, Caroline. Let's go play trivia with Sierra. Hi everyone. My name is Sierra, or CC for short. Welcome to the trivia portion of Wheels Up. I am so excited to play trivia with you today. We are in for some fun with 10 questions to puzzle your puzzler. We have four answers and only one that's correct. Can you figure it out? Well, are you ready? Let's play. Question number one, what do whales breathe through? A, their nose. B, their lungs. C, their gills. Or D, their teeth. What do whales breathe through? And the correct answer is B, their lungs. Question number two, where do whales sleep? A, on their backs with their belly above the water. B, beneath the surface in shallow areas. C, at the top of the water with their blowhole above the surface. Or D, on the sand or a rock. You guessed it, C. That's where the whales take a snooze. Which animals can be found in South Africa? Is it A, baleen whales, B, Sharks, C, dolphins, or D, all of the above. Which animals can be found in South Africa? You guessed it, D, all of the above. Great job. Question number four, how would you classify a dolphin? Is it A, a fish, B, an amphibian, C, a mammal, or D, a reptile. Hmm, which one of these is a dolphin? Just like you and I, the dolphin is a mammal. Question number five. What is a group of dolphins called? Are they A, a crew, B, a pride, C, a gaggle, or D, a pod? Hmm, if you guess D, you are correct. A group of dolphins is called a pod. Question number six. Why do sharks have denticles, small razor sharp teeth that feel like sandpaper all over their skin? A, to reduce friction from surrounding water when the shark swims. B, to help them retain body heat in deep water. C, this is how a shark smells its prey. Or D, to avoid any light reflection from the surface making the shark easier to spot in the water. You guessed it, A, good job. Question number seven. How many times better is a shark's sense of smell versus a human's? Is it A, 10 times better? B, 300 times better? C, 6,000 times better? Or D, 10,000 times better? Can you believe it? 10,000 times better than a human smell. Wow! Question number eight. 
Seals, sea lions, and walruses belong to a group of marine mammals called A. Philipperazzi B. Pinnipeds C. Oceanistas or D. Blubba Bubba's Hmm, these are all funny names, but if you guess pinnipeds, you were right! Great job! Question number nine. What animal is often termed the puppies of the sea? A. A macaroni penguin. B. A great white shark. C. A river otter. Or D. A South African fur seal. Oh, who is the puppy out of that group? You got it! The South African fur seal. Aren't they cute? And last question, number 10. How do African penguins lay their eggs? A. Hide them in meerkat tunnels. B. The male carries the eggs in his feather pouch. C. Burrows dug into the ground. Or D. Nests on cliffs and rock crevasses. Wow! Can you believe they dig holes in the ground and put their eggs there? Wow! You did such a good job! Thank you for playing trivia with me today. I look forward to playing with you again soon. Bye! Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to watch more Wheels Up episodes, you can find us on YouTube at Sunrise Association. Wheels Up has its own playlist. Or download our app at Sunrise Studios. I look forward to seeing you next time.